you for this morning, Lord, as we just uh, take a, a little stop from the book of Genesis, God, and uh, see, Lord, what you've done in reaching out, Father, uh, to our Samaria, Lord, uh, outside of our G Jerusalem and Judea, but down, Father, into Mexico with your love and your grace. We just pray, Lord, that you would just um, be with each one of the missionaries, give them the uh, take away any fear of sharing what you've done, Lord, and uh, that we could glean from that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It says in James one twenty seven. many of you know this, it says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. So what does is, what is real religion, pure religion look like? To visit the orphans and the widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. There's a real desire when you see uh, you know, how our lives do make a difference and do speak forth God's word is to visit kids whose parents are not around and they're being brought up. Uh, we have in our country a foster care system that really helps support that. In many other places in the world they have an orphan system, an orphanage system, where it's more kind of a, like a group home kind of a scenario. So we support one of those orphanages called the Kids Kingdom, and they go to a summer camp, and I'll stop right there, and I'll let you take it over from there. Okay. Sound good? I just uh, wanted to share a little bit beforehand. Um, Brad had a gone on vacation, and I was teaching, and... Uh, I was before my study. Uh, I had gotten an email from a lady that I talked to down there in Mexico, and what she said, because uh, I had been asking, you know, are the kids going to be able to go to uh, to camp this year? And she says, we don't know if the kids are going to be able to go to camp. Uh, Mexico won't allow the kids to leave the orphanages, and so I kept on checking. I, I bought some plane tickets back in January, and uh, because of COVID. And so I bought these plane tickets, but I never finalized. I never sent them the money. I, I just reserved them. And then when the time came up to pay for them so that I could hold my spot at that price, um, I let them go. And I sent her another email, you know, are the kids going to be able to go? We don't know. And that happened, I think, like three different times. I, I ordered vans. And then uh, I called the orphanage to see if they were going to be able, if they had different information, if they were going to be allowed to go. And so it really felt uh, I was praying about it and asking the Lord, what should we do? They said, you can come down and do construction. And I'm like, I don't know how many people want to go and do construction. And so continuing to pray, trying to call the orphanage, I got through once or twice. Once I couldn't understand anything, they couldn't understand me. Uh, the second time I talked to one of the kids, but the message never got delivered. And um, so praying about it and just, I guess the Lord's closing it down this year. So I sent her an email and I told her, we're not going to be able to go this year. And then I called the guy about the vans and I said, we're not going to be able to go this year. And I had let the plane tickets go away. And uh, the guy with the van said, that's great because there's lots of people going and these vans are already rented out. I said, there's lots of people going. I thought you couldn't go to the orphanages. Well, you can go to the orphanages, but the orphanages can't leave. They, they can't, the people there can't leave. So there's people going down there. I said, can you get me some numbers? And so he got me like four different people's numbers. But then uh, two days later, I got an email that said that the orphanage is allowed to go this year. And we talked to the kids there, and they are so excited to see the Amigos. And I'm thinking, but I just canceled. I felt like the Lord closed the door and we're not allowed to go. That, that was, that's what I thought. And it's like, Lord, if you want us to go, you're going to have to start opening some doors because I closed them all. And uh, in her email, she had said that to help the Amigos, the, the guys from America coming down, uh, to help the Amigos go, we're going we're gonna to provide a van to drive it to hold 12 people and a truck to haul luggage. So... I asked at church, and a lot of you guys were here, if there was anybody interested in going to Mexico. And I think I had close to 15 people. So uh, I called, or you know, I called for a group reservation. They still had tickets available. I ordered those tickets. I didn't care what the price was. I ordered them. I ordered them to go down and to get back. I called, and uh, I didn't have a van, but I was thinking, well, they have a 12-seater and a truck, so that'll fit us, right? 
And then a couple more people wanted to go and a couple more people wanted to go. And so I'm buying more tickets and I'm buying more tickets and I'm buying more tickets. The lady says, you outgrew our truck and you outgrew our van. You're going to have to get one of your own. So I called. I'm like, he said he didn't have no more, but we'll see. He says, yeah, I got another van. And so it just seemed like all of the doors opened. They just, they, they just flew open for us to be able to go. One of the things that you're not going to see in the picture, we went. And we're going to tell you about that now. But when I got down there, I was talking to the director, and he said almost all of the Amigos, almost all of the missionary teams canceled this year. They canceled for safety. They canceled for COVID. They canceled for multiple different reasons. He said we had one other group almost as big as yours. And after our group, there's going to be maybe the next biggest group will be maybe 10 and then two and then three, and, you know, just small. And so they're going to continue to put on. They're still going to have the orphanages come, but they're going to do it all themselves uh, because the, the Amigos had canceled. And he said, I'm so thankful that you guys came. I said, but I canceled. And when I looked at my email, I had sent that email off, but it didn't go to the lady. It actually went to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, because I had been sending him the emails that I got because he helps me lead the teams going down there. And so I had sent, taken the, the email from Christina and I sent it to him and I looked at the email that said Christina and I responded to it. We're not going to be able to make it. Well, it wasn't the original one. It was the one that I sent to Chris. And so God had been, uh, you know, protecting us and going before us just so that he could open up the doors and show off and say, you guys are going. And so uh, just God's hand before we ever took off. So we're going to start with a little bit of a slideshow, and uh, Brooke's going to start us off. What do I say? Do you need a, a microphone? Um, this is Malay. She's 10 years old, and she was my nina. Um, she was, I really loved her. She was very creative. She loved drawing and coloring and enjoyed doing all of the dancing and singing with me, um, at the concert. So that was really fun. Um, this is my Nina Legna. Um, she was nine years old and somehow she got even sassier than she was last time we went. <laughs> um, it was really fun watching her, like, um, not being rude, but kind of jokingly threatening everyone <laughs> who, um, like, tried to go up to her. Or um, she had a brother who someone had a crush on, and it was really fun watching her be really protective of him. <laughs> this is my Nina. Her name was Naomi. Uh, she was 10, and she was creative and love to sing and dance. This is my niña, Estrella, which means star in Spanish. And she was a star. She greeted me every time with a beautiful smile. And when we would be coming back together, she would find me and over here and um, very creative and just a very fun loving and special loving soul. And mm -hmm. she had two little brothers there as well. This is my Nina Rocio. She was very fast, and she kept running away from me a lot. But she finally learned to like me like, on day four or five. So, yeah. Uh, this is my Nina Ardiani, and she was really quiet, and she liked to turn away from me. A lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, these are my niñas, Vanessa and Adilene. Uh, they were both very energetic and confident. And it was just a whole lot of fun to see Vanessa again and bond with Adilene. These are my two ninos, and they were both very energetic and ran a lot. This is my nina, Abby. Uh, she 
was very fun and very creative. Whenever we did a project, she would do something completely different, but it turned out amazing. Um, and she was very nice. Alan, Alan will mute it. Just keep it on. This is my Nino Akon. He is the baby of the orphanage, and he's three. And everybody loves him, fawns over him, takes him. And my goal for the whole entire week was just to keep him alive. <laughs> because they take care of him so much, he has absolutely no fear. He will run off a cliff. If you're not careful, you have to be right underneath him at the playground. And I succeeded in keeping him alive with the help of my, my friends up here. So thank you. I uh, spent a lot of time uh, with the older kids. And I came down one day to watch uh, the younger kids just to see how it's going and, and to see the other group uh, running around. Well, they have this, it's like a, a monkey bar. It's like a ladder. It goes in and over and it goes up at an angle to get onto this playground. And he's running from somebody, this little guy is, and he's running up that ladder. And as he's running up that ladder, Angelic is trying to hit every empty spot to catch his feet as they're falling through so he can get up there. And she's, you know, it was, it was, it was crazy to watch how fast he was going and he did didn't care where his, he was just running up the ladder to get away from whoever it was. And as she's just sticking her, you know, just tr trying to keep him up so that he could get onto the thing. And after that, I don't know what happens if he runs off the other end. What are you going to do? Go catch him. But he was very quick and, and very uh, unafraid of anything. That guy was fast. <laughs> this is my Nina Danira. Uh, she was new, like, I think two months new. Um, so she was, or to the orphanage, she was very closed off to begin with. Um, she didn't like to do much, uh, but towards the end she opened up a bit and was very enthusiastic about different things that she seemed to like. This is my Nina Kimberly. She is 10 and she loved arm wrestling and playing on the playground. So. She was pretty energetic. These are my ninos. I had five-year-old twin boys. I didn't raise boys, so that was a challenge. Um, and they, too, are energetic. And at the beginning of the week, sorry, Gael and Israel. And at the beginning of the week, Gael was very um, clingy and wanted to be with me. And Israel didn't really want to have anything to do with me. But about two days in, it flip-flopped. And so Israel basically didn't leave my side. Um, I mean, except when he was playing and things. But anytime we were together, he wanted my hand and was just um, very close. And Gael was like, no, nah, I'm kind of independent. I'm going to do my own thing. So um, again, just five-year-old boys was challenge. And I couldn't have gotten through it without Brooke and her assistance when she wasn't working. These are... Uh my two ninos, I had uh, Ernesto. He is the one right next to me. He's been my nino for three or four years, I think. Um, I had a kid named Misael and a kid named Yvonne. Yvonne was there only one year. And then I think his parents came and took him away. Uh, Miss Ayel uh, wasn't there this year. Uh, before that, I had him with a couple of other people. So Yvonne has been with me for quite a while. I carry a picture in my Bible, and I pray for him often. Uh, the next little guy next to him is Kevin, and he is well-mannered, well-behaved. He is the perfect little guy, uh, and he's just, yeah. he just is well-behaved. He's not a handful. He just kind of does his own thing. He's easy to, to chase after, and he'll be right there whenever, you know, he needs to be. He'll be right there. And, and so it was, it was great to have these two guys, the one that I, I've been with for quite a while. I had a third. Um, his name was Alex, and uh, he was a little bit uh, older, I think, than Yvonne, and he was a little bit more uh, rebellious, I guess you would say. Uh, the first day I was pinched and poked and whatever, and, and then uh, the next day he had to go home. He got in trouble for something. I don't know what. And uh, so I ended up with these two guys. It was 
It was interesting to see how God's hands work. Uh, I didn't want the, this behavior, and so I was praying about it and asking God what to do with it. But then when he wasn't there no more, it's like I, I didn't want him to leave. I, I just, you know, and so that was, that was a rough part. On the left is Angel. He's nine, and then on the right is Eric. Um, Angel, he is quite the, tries to be, uh, he sits, every time he sits down, he's always tapping, putting his hands together, always just constantly moving. Um, likes to get out and try to play soccer, but he's not very tall, so he gets trampled over a lot, uh, but had a lot of fun. Uh, but Eric, he's uh, moves around a lot. <laughs> It was hard to keep up with the two of them. They always wanted to go different directions, but it was a lot of fun. So these are my two ninos, Manuel and Jose. Jose is 14, Manuel is 13. Both of them really love soccer, and no matter how many times they got injured, they would just keep playing every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and these were my ninas. Um, there was Jessica and Yuvia. Um, they're both 13 years old, and they just really touched my heart when each one took my arms and was saying, Mi amiga, mi amiga, so <laughs> playing tug of war with me. These are my two amigos. On the left is Armando. He is uh, very smart and a uh, great heart. He charged the ocean the day we went to the the beach, so I had to get one of the other team members to go out with him and trade it for the two little guys. Uh, Chewy is on my on the right. He is the cool guy. He's smart. He's handsome. He's charming, and he's a he's a great athlete. So they were fun guys to get to be around. This is my Nina Esther. She's 15. I believe she's the oldest in the group. She's been there nearly 10 years. Uh, she's very close to the director um, and um, the husband and the wife. Um, they're all a family, but uh, Esther especially, so I got to spend a lot of time together with them. We're on the same team. Um, being 15 and the oldest, she's kind of the little mom, so she kind of tracks all of them. And of course, is too cool to really need anybody. Um, so as we progressed, she's very kind. Um, she would uh, start saying, come on, Ben, Ben. Um, she didn't want to leave me behind, and, and it was great. And she really took into account what I, what I was capable of doing. And so she, she made it very easy on me. <laughs> All right, to my right, your left is uh, Hian, not Ian, Hian, which I'd even, I kept saying Ian for over half the trip because just how they pronounced it was quick. It sounded like Ian, so I kept calling him Ian. And when I saw his name when I was running the car, it said Hian. I'm like, oh, wow, I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Um, he's, uh, he's pretty independent. Um, he was the first one out the door. Like, he was done eating, he was gone. And, um, and uh, when we did affirmations, he had a beautiful message for me saying how blessed he was to have met me. And on, uh, it was, I couldn't help to put a big old smile on my face, as Bill liked to say, a banana smile. Um, and uh, I got down on one knee, gave him my message about how blessed I was to have met him, how he's a good man, you know what I mean? How he's going to grow up to be a good man and all this other stuff. And uh, give him a big old hug, you know, because I want to be at his level. And, um you know, when I was standing up, I heard a sniffle, you know, and uh, I give him another hug, and uh, and soon after, we gave you know, long, another long hug for good night. And then, uh, the other guy, he was a handful in a way, but in a way he wasn't. And, um, he didn't want to eat, so me and the, I did, kept going to caretakers trying to force him to eat. And when he first got to the orphanage, he was skin and bones. He had to feed him vitamins and other stuff like that, so it was a concern. Um, most of the time he listened. Um, there was a couple times where he wouldn't listen. But oh yeah, um, by the way, his name is uh, Fabian, the guy on the left, little guy with the little grin going. Um, 
So yeah, it was it was a, um, his message for me with affirmation was, thank you for giving me good food, and that was it. <laughs> and uh, soon after, I give this whole heartfelt message to him. He's trying to play with the guy next to him, and then the guy's like, hey, listen, you know the caretaker, the husband that uh, uh, they were talking about, and uh, and immediately he just gets up, looks over at me, gets up, and runs away. So. That was my experience over there. All right, so we're going to jump into some of the activities that we did. Um, day one is mostly just traveling. So if any of you guys have something you want to say about travel day. We squeezed a lot of luggage <laughs> into those vans. So Bill, I want you to show that you flew in this San Diego. Well, um, we... we Usually we leave early uh, to get down there, and so we had a later flight. I was able to come to church in the morning on Sunday and then take off afterwards. I, I didn't stay for church. I had to leave uh, at 10 uh, to get down there. And so uh, we get down there to San Diego, and we have our group, and we're, you know, we're early, and we get all of our stuff there. And then when we fly to San Diego, uh, the van company, they just park a van outside for us and leave the keys in it. I don't talk to anybody. I don't, you know, I don't have to do any. It's really a great, a great setup. So I just walk across the street. They send me a text, tell me where it's at. I go pick it up and drive it over, and, and then we start stuffing luggage in it. Well, uh, we have a lot of luggage. So I should have asked them to remove the back seat. They're, they're happy to do that. But you, often we take ninos with us to the beach. We're also the drivers. And so the more seats we have, the better because we can fit more kids in there. So I try not to take the seats out because I want to be able to haul more people. That way we can get them to the beach without having to haul so many vehicles. And so I left it in Well, I should have taken it out. Uh, and so we had to stuff all of our luggage. We didn't have the truck because I had a van, right? And so they didn't bring the truck for the luggage. So we're stuffing all the luggage into the vans, both of the vans. And, uh, you know, Lord, Lord bless that. We all fit. We had luggage by the doors, luggage in between. You open up the doors, everything falls out, you know. So it's like the border crossing is a little iffy because if they open the door it's gonna it's gonna pour out everywhere so it was a great trip we get down there we all get together and uh find our stuff and then head on well after we cross over the border which wasn't a big deal uh we get over the border we drive down well then they take us to before we go to rancho genesis which is the camp where the orphanages come to because what happens is that camp gives the orphanages a break we chase after their kids instead of them chasing after their kids. You know, we feed them and clean up after them and love on them and entertain them, and, and, and we're giving them a break. They might still be there, but they are so thankful that we're the ones running around. They're still watching. They're still making sure that we're <laughs> watching their kids. But uh, we get there. We have tacos. Then we go to camp. So the first day we get to camp, it's, it's still Sunday, and we get all of our stuff out, and we find out where we're going to be. We get into our rooms. Uh, we've had dinner already. We've had tacos. And then the, they, we meet the staff and get together. And so then day one is just getting there and getting set up. Day two is really when the niños come. So the first three hours on... Monday morning, we spend working, um, doing construction before the Ninos get there. If anybody wants to say anything, just grab a mic or ask for a mic. Um, these are just random photos of what projects we were working on. We all broke into several different groups. So um, my group was split up even further into two separate things. And so we were working on leveling some dirt to put a shed up. This group is clearing brush. So they are going to build a chapel on the hill. And that whole area right there, it's very rocky and it slopes quite a bit. And there's brush everywhere, whether it's alive or dead. And so the first step is getting us with all of our elbow grease to cut down all of the brush. So that whole area. I don't think it's in the slideshow, but I have a picture of afterwards. We worked hard with our pickaxes and our everything, shovels and stuff, and cleaned that entire 
mountain area of all the brush and so they're ready to lay the foundation now so yeah in the in the background you can see the camp and uh i don't know brooke if you can wiggle your mouse uh show us where the uh, dorms are will it show up on there yeah give me one second But yeah, the, the camp, it's all on a hill, and down there in the valley is actually the road that goes into Ensenada. So we are quite a ways away from traffic. We're quite a ways away from city life. I mean, that is really the road that's going into Ensenada, and we're a few miles. I think it takes us 20 minutes, maybe half an hour to get into a city, which isn't Ensenada. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, What's that? So yes. So these are right the there. dorms, the Amigo dorms for us. And then here we have the kids' dorms. This is the dining hall here, soccer field. And then there's also another entire two extra camps back here. So they have the ability to host three camps all at the same time. So yeah, right behind this rock is a kitchen. And then the staff dorms are over in here. And so even on the other side of this hill, down a little ways, is I think they have four camps. They're hoping to build two more. They house maybe three more. They house uh, or they take in about 1,000 orphans every year coming from quite a ways away. And they're hoping to add more dorms so that they can take in over 2,000. They want to double. They want to continue to, to reach out and uh, love on more kids. So that's their goal. But on the mountain, they want to build a chapel where we can go and worship the Lord and so that's what they're trying to do they have great visions they just don't have great resources and so it happens slowly last time we were there they only owned nine acres of land and yes. this last December they purchased another 31 acres so they now have 40 acres of mountainous area where they can expand and do all sorts of things So this place was covered with literally anything you can possibly think of. <laughs> and we had to load it into a truck and take it up a hill about 20 minutes up the hill and unload it and do it over and over and over again. This is called the Home Depot, by the way. Um, this is just where they kept all their uh, extra stuff. Um, like those pipes were for like plumbing and those were like some parts of boards, you know, nails sticking out and some of tarp still stuck in it, you know, so they reuse it over and over and over again and try to be as frugal and as possible with their supplies. And we moved it all, as he said, all the way up the hill to the new Home Depot where we had to separate it. We hold the record, by the way, of trips, four trips instead of the previous two. So <laughs> Calvary Chapel Gridley right there. Um, <laughs> so, um, but we had to watch out a couple of times. We had some close encounters but um, everyone got out safe. Um, and so, so after the construction, the kids arrived. This is the first day still of, con of being there, second day for us. Then before they even assigned kids with their adults, they took them up the hill for a concert. And then they were broken into their teams. Can she have the uh, uh, on this one, my Nina, her favorite color was red. She wore red, that same red shirt that she's wearing every single day and the same red scrunchie. Um, and she was so, so happy when we got put into Team Rojo. Um, <laughs> If I would have let her, she would have colored my entire face red, not just put hearts and dots all over. Um, she loved painting and anything artistic as well, so. So, yeah. So, this is one of the many soccer games that we've 
done here. They just constantly, the kids, every time they get free time, that's, let's go, let's go play soccer. <laughs> They're always out there. Played lots of, uh, as you saw, the different, some of the different games. Just have us all come together, just uh, spending time together, getting to be more comfortable with each other. And at this point, we still haven't even actually got to uh, separate into our individual uh, ninos or ninas with our amigos. So you can see in that picture that this part right here, that is an improvement. It has a net above it. Because oh, yeah. last year, or two years ago, right. uh, when we were playing here, every time we played soccer and it got kicked too hard, one of us is running down the hill. And it's a pretty steep hill. And so this is an improvement. It keeps back about 90% of the balls. So we ran down that hill a whole lot less. And we were a whole lot thankful for, for the hay and, and the netting. Unless you have a kick like Seth, which goes a little too high over the net and still goes way down the hill. <laughs> This is us finishing or starting to build the shed. More construction on day three. Um, and then this is the other group of construction. They are working on putting up a net in one of the other camps. That um, Yeah, that's the um, another That's soccer us field. putting up the wire to go on the nets. And it keeps the nets nice and secure for the balls. Digging holes so that the um, poles will be secure. Yeah, that was me learning how to use a jackhammer for the very first time, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> Chris is working on putting up a shade structure in one of the other camps. This, yeah. So again, they took very good care of me. While everybody was working very, very hard, I was able to help translate uh, between Chino, my buddy, and Chris so that they could do the construction. And so that was, that was really special, actually. This shade structure we're working on here, it's an octagon that is 30 plus feet across that they're doing. These are eight, eight by eight beams that they're using for risers and goes around the whole top. That's what we're working on starting to build. So it's going to be very large. And, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. I think the goal of this shade structure is so that the Amigos have a place to go to do mm -hmm. their Bible studies, do their morning devotionals. And so they're trying to create a place for that. Because if you go to the cafeteria or the, the kitchen dining hall area uh, and the Nino see you, you will definitely have a couple that want to walk through on, under the guise of going to the bathroom to say hi. <laughs> this is, this is Mentidoso. And Brooke uh, put the name on the side of the cup, and uh, it means uh, liar. It means liar. So uh, a couple of years ago, I brought a bunch of dice uh, to play with the kids because I learned that if you don't bring something for them to do, you play soccer the whole entire time. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, okay, I can, I can do something different and get the, the Ninos to not drag me onto the soccer field because I can only play so much soccer. And so I taught them how to play liar's dice. And they taught me what it meant. And so <laughs> then it's no longer liar's dice in Mexico, it's mentidoso. And Brooke bought some uh, cups online for us and then printed, uh, she has a, a little printer thing to print uh, the names on there. And so uh, I brought the cups and then they get excited and then during free time they will come running up to me with the bag of dice and the cups going mentiroso mentiroso and then i'll sit down with one of the kids who wanted to play and then i give them five dice i have five dice we're going to play a game and then another one comes and another one comes and another one comes i'm like two dice two dados and so then everybody takes all the dice out of the cups except for two that way we can get around the around the table i think we only finished maybe three games but we all like to play that game uh alan uh had a had a nino you want to share alan the my non 
my little round guy was not a particularly good soccer player, but he very smart. He loved this game, and he kept going back to it. And there was a Bill was the Pied Piper, and he'd show up, and everybody go to the table and want to play. So I asked Bill if I could please replace the dice and leave them with the kids. And uh, so that set of of things that Brooke put together are in the orphanage for the kids to continue playing with. And it was it was fun watching them giggle and and do the numbers of liars dice and. Uh, Bill provided a real opportunity for the kids who weren't the star athletes to have fun and show their skills. And we ordered the replacement this morning. <laughs> it arrives tomorrow. <laughs> so we left them being liars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we taught them math skills. <laughs> yep. Rock, paper, scissors. Yep. Rock, paper, scissors. And the... It was interesting, the, all, the, all the kids and all of us, all at the same time playing the game, and we're transferring these little bracelets or necklaces, so every time you're trying to transfer, if you lose, you gotta give it up. <laughs> um, so you all know that Jasmine's Nina um, obviously was sassy, <laughs> and um, well, I played one, um, game with her. She kept on going over and over. When I lost, I gave one to her. She made me give one to her. When she won, I gave one to her. So there was <laughs> there was no way, uh, and I just kept going and going until I had like two left, and I was like, no, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> done losing to you. <laughs> The theme oh, of their yeah. week. Oh, do you want to say it, Bill? No. Was don't look at the waves. And it was about dealing with their fears. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, it was about dealing with their fears because these kids have a lot of trauma in their lives. And uh, one day they built boxes and, and put their fears inside it and burned it that night at the campground. And and the final story was. Jesus on the Sea of Galilee with the disciples and they get scared and he wakes up and tells them why they ask them why they're afraid and, and you guys know the story and he calms the storm and that's really what they were trying to leave the kids with the understanding that Jesus can can calm their storms if they allow him into his heart and, and approach him that way. Um, I just want to add that when they put their fears in a box, my you didn't do it because she said she didn't have any fears. <laughs> okay, this is the swimming pool. And uh, it was one of the most hectic swimming pools I've ever seen in my life. And, and over one of the edges, and I don't know if it'll show it, was a this thing that was like a washing machine it, it you could have clean clothes it those kids kept jumping up and down and around and through and a couple of the little girls kept going underwater and coming up sp swallowing so i was scared to death for those two girls then because they had courage they demanded to go into the big pool and, and I freaked out, and I, and I asked one of the people who were in the pool, make sure you got this kid in your hands at all times, because cause I thought they were going to go to the bottom. But no, as, as they said, every kid came back from the beach, and nobody drowned in the pool. So it was amazing. I, I think we had 13 little guys in that pool, 13. in that little pool at one point in time. <laughs> the big one over at the side is that actual little kid's pool, but there's a big old, you know, it's busted. This was their version of paintball. So we had paint wars that was actually a capture, a version of capture the flag. Anybody want to say Catherine, anything you want to share, oh, share your little experience you had with that? <laughs> sure, I thought I'd be clever as all the other team was climbing up our flagpole. I thought 
Oh, perfect time, because the, the guys on the top had like big, the big shooter things, and they would have to refill, and I thought, okay, they'll shoot all those guys, and I'll go behind Hunter, who's a big guy, and I'll, you know, sneak right in when they're refilling. Yeah, that wasn't the best uh, plan, because <laughs> Hunter got shot, and he was like, okay, I'm out. I'm just going to back out of here as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little ran over, but um, I survived, and then poor Amethyst came behind me trying, and she got shot with the big thing right in her eye, like, really fast, but we survived, so, and then she came up, and she saw her mom all bloody, and whatnot, <laughs> but we survived, and I think we all came back with, you know, little scrapes and bruises, but um, nothing major. God protected us from anything major. Oh, and Amethyst, yeah, sliced up her hand on the first day, so we've got, we've got some more wounds. Oh, sorry. I was sitting on, like, so they had these bunk beds, and I was on the top one. So, like, sitting off, and then I started sliding down. So I slid, like, down, and my hand just sliced right down it, and I have two cuts on my hand. So. That was the first day. <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, we, we all came back with probably a little bit of injuries, but nothing God protected us from anything major, and we all made it. Yeah, without. from from my point of view, it, the game was rigged. Um, you, <laughs> they they got they got two people in the middle that can squirt you, and you can't get them out because I tried. I ran up and I squirted them in the face, and and they just squirted me, and I was out. I'm like, uh, I wish I understood Spanish because I didn't understand the rules. You, they can't get out. I got it, but I have to get past them to touch. I only have to touch the flag, which I didn't realize. I thought I had to grab it, and so uh, then it becomes a rush to get up to the flag not so much shooting the other team well I'm sitting in the back after my team lost and I'm watching all of this and uh, Holly and a couple of people on her team with Hunter they go running up for the flag it's not their flag they're touching the opposite team's flag and and Catherine she's going for the the same exact flag but that's actually her flag well they all go up there at the same time and the, the guys on the tower are just squirting them and they're all out and then I just see Catherine roll down the hill into <laughs> this bush and and she's just laying there I'm like oh no I'm on the other side of the fence and she's just and she gets up and she's all bloody it's like it, it was it was it was fun but it was chaos we gotta we gotta move a little bit faster but you'll catch up mm-hmm This was the um, fair that the um, camp um, had set up for all the kid, uh, kids, which had, you know, booths that they got tickets. And so they got booths where they can get snacks and they had games where they could win prizes. And the kids had a blast. Yeah. And fireworks. Yeah. They did have fireworks at the end of the fair. Um, the fair was very fun, and I only got to use one of my tickets because my Nina wanted to go everywhere, and she got everything but didn't eat any of it. So. <laughs> this is when the kid. This is when the kids painted these banners in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, it was before we headed to the beach. Yeah. I uh, didn't need to bring my van this time because they allowed us to use the bus. So my team, which was the Panthers, I think it's over there, mm -hmm. we did not want to be like the other teams. We did not want to be disorganized. So you can see. And so they gave me the task of drawing a panther. So Angelica showed me a picture of a panther on her phone, and I tried my best to trace it. But all the littler kids on our team just wanted to paint all over it. And it was like, no, stay away. <laughs> <laughs> so this was on the way to the beach yeah. So, yeah. so they could be well rested for the beach and mm -hmm. I couldn't have survived the beach without Brooke because one wanted to be in the water as far as he could possibly be and the other eh, he preferred the sand so this is how we watch our kids when we're tired <laughs> um, 
This is after Riley dug a hole and my Nina got in the hole and so we buried her. My Nina didn't want to be in the water, but she did. I don't know why. Uh, I taught her how to buggy board. She didn't understand, but she did a little bit. But the beach was fun. Go back. My Nina was like scared of the waves, so every wave she would like jump into my arms and so hold her. <laughs> This is us uh, starting to, we're in a competition with the other camp. Go out. <laughs> well, the, in, in the other camp, when they started the competition, the other camp, all their kids started gathering the tools to, to mold things and, and the pails and all of those kinds of things. And our group started moving massive amounts of sand. So, so when it got done, one looked like Disneyland and had all these little bridges and the guy had all the symbolism that it, that it meant and stuff. And ours, if you've ever been to Masada, it was a great replica of, of Masada. Masada. Yes. Um, and well, for us, the other kids were a smaller group and they can all speak because there was no amigos so they can also all communicate together because not only did they have the tools to build like a nice structure, they also could fluently communicate, and we had a bunch of younger kids, so and they just wanted to build something big. So we were like, okay. So we just started a huge pile of sand, and we molded that from a sand pile, sand pile probably about that big. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. But when you think about it, we have 28 amigos that are going and 30 kids. And so you have over 50 people trying to build a sandcastle in a little circle. I mean, we're bringing in dirt from somewhere or sand from somewhere else just to build this thing. And you try to make something, you know, look a certain way. And you got five other hands that are tearing it apart <laughs> while you're doing it. It's like, uh, never mind. Okay, go for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the things that I really enjoyed about this group is this was all about the kids, and we all understood that. And to get these little ones, I mean, we had tons of little ones. The other group were all teens. And to get all those little ones working together, you know, with us to accomplish something, and they had so much fun, and just to see them all active and involved was just great. We got boogie boards. Um, this is a picture, uh, a boy named Jose wanted a picture with me on my phone. And so my Nina decided to take a picture or try to take a picture. Um, my mom's Nino Akon, he loved Jose and wanted to be around him at all times. Um, as soon as my Nina hit the uh, picture button, he jumped on him. Uh, and... It was not great. People got hurt, but this is mid-action. <laughs> we were sprayed in the face, by the way, on those blankets. This what is this? Yeah. This, this, this is us. Um, every morning we would go out at uh, seven fifteen, and we would have our Bible studies. Um, that's when the kids would go out and do their VBS study and before we all went to breakfast. The team. Oh, yeah. We had a nice little uh, scavenger hunt. Scavenger. And so each team had to go to a certain place to get a clue, to go to a next place to get a clue. They ran us all over the camp. It was a lot of running. They want us to go to the top of the hill, to the bottom of the hill, to the top of the hill, to the bottom of the hill. We... We were tired. <laughs> you could see that. Very right tired. <laughs> that was the staff. That's the staff. <laughs> but then they let us get in the pool again. It was a great workout. <laughs> it was. And then they wanted us to get dirty again. They only give you three showers 
for the week. And so they, they put us in the pool and we think, yes, one less shower. And then they put us in the mud. And so. And the showers have uh, water that is not Sierra cold, but has no heater to it. So it's. Uh, so you, you do have to use the mic just because it is being recorded. The, the shower, there, there, they, there, is no, there is no water heater, I think, in the whole place. Yeah. So the water runs downhill, and uh, it starts really cold, and it gets tepid if you're lucky. So, uh, and they tell you how precious water is. So a shower there is not what we would normally consider a shower. They had this uh, thing that you just saw where we did archery and multiple different things, uh, obstacle. obstacle course. Mm -hmm. And I was the second team to go, and I'm watching the first team to go, and I see the amigos go over, and I see the ninos get to the top, and they're just trying to jump mm -hmm. off the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, no, this is not good. And so I ran down there, and for every single team, I was there to catch them because they would turn around the other side. There's a rope there, but... They're not using the rope. There's steps on the side where you can step there, but they're not using the steps. They're just jumping off the edge, and here comes an amigo, and I'm dragging them out of the way because there's an adult coming down, and so I'm trying to eliminate some of the uh, accidents that could happen because they are crazy. One day they did have organized games where they did table games. This is... Um so there was a big soccer game. Uh, some did not want to participate, so there were a lot of games laid out and bracelets and beads and nail polish and all that sort of stuff. And me and my Nina had a really good time. <laughs> More tired kids. <laughs> if, the, if the Ninos are falling asleep in their plates, imagine what the Amigos are doing. <laughs> We always had free time um, after the meals. Usually for half an hour at least, you had free time with your, you needed to be with your ninos, and the majority of them wanted to be either on the soccer field or on the playground, and it's amazing how long they can play on that playground. And their favorite game is tag, and they always want to be chased, but they're not as fond of the chasing. <laughs> Thrice. So this is um, at the beginning of the last um, evening, uh, affirmations, and we were able to write um, letters in English that were taken individually by the staff and translated back into Spanish. Um, and then we had a booklet that then we would rewrite the Spanish in for them to keep. Um, a lot, uh, several people, quite a few people brought um, items for all the kids, and um, Sherry and Chris and Seth had organized and um, got it all down there, and we put bags together and, and put these um, little booklets in there, and for some of these kids that have been there multiple years, um, you know, the stories are coming back that, you know, the pictures that have been taken are still hanging there. Um, they, the, they value the books um, and what we've written to them tremendously. Here's a complete set of things um, that went into the bags and they loved it. And, and what was really great, I mean, you know, toys are toys. I think the biggest hit, they loved everything. The biggest hit is on the far right, <laughs> the water squirter. But they are so ingenious that before they could get to water, they were using it to blow air in the balloons up at the top. So they're pretty sharp engineers. And that book, um, uh, with uh, the help with their walk with Christ, there were many kids the next day that were carrying that book around. I kind of made a mistake with that water squirter, okay? So okay. I taught mine, okay, you can blow sand. I put it to the ground, blow sand. Next thing you know, all the kids are around puffing sand. You know, they're pumping sand. Not only that, I also taught them if you put it to your arm and you can stretch it out, it'll, you know, you can pop it or you can squeeze it and make a noise. So when we were doing praying or something, you'll hear one of the kids going, you know, because they're blowing into their arm. And I was like, what did I do? <laughs> I just, I just want to share about that. Uh, well, Sherry, uh, would you share about the the stuff that got brought? Um, she's going to share about her 
Yeah, I was going to share about my. Okay, that's fine. Uh, th some people had uh, donated some stuff. That's where the the bag of of things came from. Some people from the church uh, got together and they asked me, uh, "What can I bring?" I said, "Well, you need about thirty of everything that you bring." And so, and which praise God because we had 30, 30 kids come. I was just guessing. I think in the past we've had as many as thirty one, thirty two. And so I said thirty. Well, we had thirty, and so people would bring some stuff and donate it. And and so we smuggled it down in a suitcase. Uh, one of the one of these guys uh, only brought one suitcase to check, and we can check two and up to fifty pounds. And so we just loaded it down and brought an extra suitcase. But at the end, when we tell them we love them and we try to encourage them, we give them those bags, and they all have something to take with them. We put the little books that we wrote on uh, that's translated into Spanish, and then we put that in there. And uh, they, it was it was a great gift for them. And so a lot of people helped with that. Yes. I just want to quickly go back to this picture. Um, this was after I had my affirmation with my niñas, and uh, my niñas were best friends with Debbie's uh, niña. Um, the picture of me um, behind Debbie, um, this is Ed Air. He was my very first niño back in 2014. Um, his mom and dad run the orphanage. And his mom said he constantly asks about me if I'm there. He still has my picture. And this year when he found out I was there, um, his mom had asked Christine, one of the counselors, if he can come and visit with me. And so she allowed him to come and spend the last day with us. I'm going to cry. I was very, very blessed. I'd like to add one thing to, to really share um, they ask the kids at every meal or at every event or whatever, because we pray a lot and it's important, who wants to pray? And they all want to pray. They come that way, which is really inspiring to me. And to the point that they have everyone close their eyes and he'll go around and pick someone because they all want to. And you've seen the age range of these kids. But I don't even know how to express when you see those little ones praying from their heart in great detail and with great um, spirit already at that young age and we're alongside them. Uh, it, it is such a blessing. I learned a lot about how to pray better from watching and listening to these kids. This is when yeah. we were saying our God buys um, on the very last day to all of our niños and niñas. Oh. On mine, you'll see me like going like this down. My kid either thought it was funny to ragdoll, so just completely let go of all of his muscle functions and just hang there. So I had to hold him up for several minutes, either that or he fell asleep. So I'm holding him up as everyone's like sharing and stuff like that. He's just eyes closed, mouth open, probably even drooling, I don't know, but I had to hold him up. <laughs> Lots of tears involved. Um, these children, they are very touched that we come. Um, they do remember us even a year later. And, you know, just like Ed Air, I mean, they hang on to the stuff that we give them. They hang on to the pictures that they take of us. You know, because we, we're like their family. We mean a lot to them, and they mean a lot to us. So I had my nina, Naomi, the past two years that I went. And when I got there, I thought I was going to have her again, but they said, it was, they said she wasn't coming. So I got paired with Kimberly, and then she did come, so she was with Tatum. And I was pretty nervous at first to have a new nina, but it worked out great, and... She was super sweet, and she matched my personality pretty well. So that was good. Um, I have to go back one. Um, when, during the, uh, when they're driving away, uh, that's when lots of people start to cry. Um, I had a very hard time saying goodbye to mine. Um, I uh, I went to the other side of the bus uh, and looked in the window. Uh, 
And it's not just the amigos that are having a hard time saying goodbye because you look inside the bus and they're just um, doing the angry face cry. You know, they, they, they're all choked up and, and they don't want to go. And, and you look at them through the window and they cry even more. And, and it, it's difficult to see them go. God has touched hearts. Uh, he, has, he has blessed us. It, it says in uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38, that he blesses us. He, he presses it down. He tries to make room for more. And we went down there, and we were truly blessed. Very we blessed. try to be a blessing to them. We try to love on these guys. We chase them around. We, we, uh, we do our best to keep up. They run like the wind, and we're doing our best to keep up. But yet, uh, we're not only a blessing to them. Uh, they are a blessing to us, and, and God has done amazing things on this trip. Um, my Nina Kimberly, at the very end of affirmation time, she had gone up to Nora to translate for me, and she was asking if I lived in Mexico, and I said, no, I live in America. And then the next thing that Nora said was, she asked, why are you here? <laughs> my Nina did not know why... We were here at all, so we tried to. I tried to explain to her what was, what we were, why we were here, but I just thought that was. But fun. what happens is they arrive and we're already there, right? Uh, we arrive the day before, and then when they show up, we come, we run down, we cheer them on, and we make a teepee, and they run underneath the bridge, and and we greet them all, and we love on them, and hug them, and say hi, and then they leave, and we say goodbye, and we're waving, and we're you know chasing the bus down the road, and waving at them, and saying bye, and so that's where we live, that's that's where we're at. I mean, some of them know we're we're. We come down to do that, but it's kind of this this thing. We're there when they show up, and we're there when they leave. They just uh, it's a special place where they can go and be loved on by us. Yes. And then afterwards, we made a, a little side trip. We had some time to kill uh, to La Bufadora. We wanted to get make a little stop. Uh, we were there for a total of fifteen minutes. Uh, which is the quickest trip that's ever been made to La Bufadora. We made it all the way almost to the blowhole uh, before you start going down. We were hoofing it. Uh, we had a mission and only a little bit of time to go there. It takes us about an hour to make this trip and 15 minutes of uh, walking down there. So we got out. We, If people wanted, they could buy a little trinket there. And then we headed back off to the border. The border. Yes. <laughs> the border, it was crazy. Um, we went through the border by Tijuana, yeah. uh, which has multiple lanes. And the last time I went through that border, uh, it was wherever you could point the nose of your car, you could cut in and organize, uh, well, not organize, disorganize chaos to get through that thing. Once we rolled into the border, there was a mass of people that were trying to get to us. Uh, just the stop sign to get into the lane to get to the border. There was a guy trying to wash my window, and I'm going, no, 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 no. And he pulled the windshield wiper up, and he's washing, and the van in front of me takes off, and, and I start taking off. And he's like, uh, he's telling me, Rojo, Rojo, the light's red, the light's red. I'm like, you didn't listen to me when I told you to stop. I mean, I'm trying to keep up with him. And so we were, because uh, we, we wanted to keep the vans as tight as possible so that no one would put their vehicle in between us because then you start getting further and further apart and separated. And so that was the goal. Um, Brooke has a, a couple of extra slides here. This is uh, us over the border. Uh, in San Diego, we had some time to kill. I think we spent two hours on the water right there. It's a it's a park right next to the airport. You can walk to the airport from there. And so we spent a couple of hours. Brooks working on this slideshow there while they're playing in the water at the beach. Um, one of the improvements besides the hay bales that we had while we were there is the dorms have an improvement. We have one of those things. That is great. Uh, we have our own bathroom, uh, yeah. which, which it works. It has water. It flushes. Uh, and we have our own showers. We didn't have, they have a big closed off area with shower heads, and that's where we used to shower. We just go down there, take a shower, and you got, you know, four or whatever shower heads. And then the ladies have four shower heads on their side, and, and you go down there, take a shower, you get three. And now we have two stalls. So that was a huge improvement and a sink. Um, so uh, 
they've they continue to chip away at it and make improvements mm -hmm. um, they they are they are trying to give these orphans the best that they can give them uh, with what little resources they have um, you know there is a blessing that we have been given uh, God has blessed us. He has uh, touched hearts. I mean, uh, we got emotions. We got, we got, uh, there is a family down there. There truly is a family down yes. there that we have been allowed to be a part of. And every year we get the same orphanage. We love on the same kids. We've had them for quite a few years and we've seen them grow up. My first Nino is 20. He has already gone through university, and he is now going to the Bible college down there. Uh, and then one of his sisters is in the orphanage. Uh, they are growing up in the orphanage. The people who are running the orphanage now grew up in the orphanage, got married, and now they're running the orphanage. And so uh, it's, it's an amazing place to go down there to. But we go down there, the, the 21 of us that went down, and uh, we hop on the plane, and it costs us something to go there. And as we go, we also pay for these kids to come. Uh, our, we, the Amigos, uh, our, our money that goes down there pays for the orphanage to come. Well, there was only two big groups that came, and they're still putting on all that. So they're footing the bill for all of this. And uh, uh, the money that goes there helps them to do all of these things. But you know what? It's not just us that do that. It's, it's all of you guys. Because we don't pay the whole price. The church picks up over half of it. And that is from money that you guys have given. There is a story in 1 Samuel, it's in chapter 30, uh, and it starts out in verse 21, uh, talking about the guys that just couldn't go. They stay behind and they guard the stuff. Maybe they're the prayer warriors like you guys have been for us this whole week. Yeah. And they're staying behind guarding the stuff. And the rest of them, they go off to battle. And they fight and they win the battle. And they come back with their wives and all the stuff. And they come back to the guys that stayed behind. And they say, let's give them their stuff and tell them to go. They can have no part with us. And King David says, no, that, that's, that's not what we're going to do. You know, these guys are just, a much, just as much a part of what happened as we were fighting the battle. God gave us the victory. And we're going to share with the people that stayed behind. You know, there is a blessing. We have been blessed more than, more than we realize Hearts have been touched. We've been included in the family down there. God has blessed us with a family here, and he continues to bless. And you guys are going to be blessed as well. You, you, you can't go down there to Mexico and not give credit to where credit is due. I mean, God has blessed us. He's given us the finances to do this, and he's touched your guys' heart to contribute to this as well. So I don't want you to think that this is all about us because it's not. No. It's definitely about you guys as well because we couldn't do it without your help, without your support, because that would be a big bill for each one of us to pay and a whole lot less of us would go. And so I, I want to say thank you. Thank you for praying for us. We definitely needed it. We were, we were ran and then ran again and ran again, and then they wanted to give us a, a, a foot race to go to the bottom and the top to see who could still survive afterwards. It, just, it was a lot of work. But we were blessed to be there running alongside these guys. And you guys are a part of that. So thank you very much for praying for us. Yeah. Um, anything else before I close? They didn't give us the video. When I get it, I can show it. Uh, we haven't showed the video uh, or the pictures because they asked us not to. So if it was online, no one at home saw it. They, they can see us, and they can hear us talking about the orphanage and the things that happened, but they didn't get to see any of these pictures. If you want to see them, you can come, and, and I'll show you the pictures. Uh, maybe we'll play them before church next Sunday so that they'll be rolling in the background while we're practicing and stuff. So if you want to come early to see all the pictures that we have just flipping, then we can uh, do that and, uh, and all, but uh, let's close in prayer. Yeah. Father, thank you 
Thank you for the amazing trip you've given us, Lord. It was hard to leave, to go like a, uh, like a magnet, holding us back, Father. And I am so thankful that you put it on all of these guys' hearts to give of themselves, to give of their money, to give of their time to go down there, Father, because once we broke away, we were so blessed to be used by you to love on these guys and to build relationships, Father. And you have not only touched their hearts, you've touched ours. And Father, I thank you for that, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, help us to remember to pray for this orphanage, to pray for these, these little guys, these niños and niñas. Uh, I pray, Father, that you would continue to stir us up, Lord. Help us not grow settled in where we're at, Father, but to be willing to step into even short-term mission work, Lord, uh, that you would go before us, Father. Help us to be your hands and feet and maybe down in Mexico next year, Father. So I thank you for what you've done. We want to give you the praise and glory and honor for bringing us home safely, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.